Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, the Carb Addiction Doc, but we're talking about something far more important. We're talking about COVID logic. One of the issues with COVID virus is it's highly likely that the majority of us at some time over the next few years is going to be infected with this virus. It is just so contagious and it is so everywhere. Think about this. The first case was described in Wuhan, as far as we know, 1st of December 2019. As I'm sitting here right now, it is late March, and every single country, every single continent already has that virus. Just think about how rapidly that virus is spread everywhere. The likelihood we are going to be safe is low, but the point is, the longer you can stay virus-free, the better. The longer you can stay virus-free, the better. However, if you can utilize that time to minimize your risk, and minimizing risk when you do get the virus all depends on one thing, the status of your immune system. In this very first section on the status of your immune system and how to boost and how to improve and how to protect your immune system, we are going to talk about medications and drugs that potentially can reduce your immunity. The first class and the single worst thing, and it pisses me off intensely. Whenever I walk past a TV screen, there seems to be an ad for some immunosuppressive drug, exomumalababab, who the hell knows, Humira, whatever it may be, and usually for relatively non-life-threatening benign conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and uh, uh, psoriasis or skin diseases. Yes, it might be nice in normal times to protect you, but if you're on those medications and you get coronavirus, you have no immune protection. You are highly likely to get a very severe form, and God knows they should pull those damn ads off TV right away, but I guess money is more important than lives. Get rid of the ads for meaningless immunosuppressive drugs that put you at high, high, high risk for bad outcomes with immunovirus. Now, if you've had a liver transplant, if you have a kidney uh, transplant, of course, keep taking those medications and be ultra safe, be ultra protected. But get off those medications. Now, not a lot of people are on those medications because they're ridiculously expensive. That's why they're advertised everywhere in the US. By the way, the only two countries in the world that advertise medications, America and New Zealand for some reason, no other country in the world advertises medications. But that's for another day. Um, the point is that those heavy, big gun immunosuppressive medications are a huge problem if you possibly can. Stop taking yours. Try to stay safe as long as you possibly can to give your immune system a chance to build up. However, the far more common medications that we take for a variety of ridiculous reasons are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, including aspirin. And the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs have been shown to be statistically significant in the severity of how COVID attacks people because those drugs suppress your immune system. And if your immune system is suppressed, it cannot react effectively to the broad, widespread infection throughout your body, particularly in your lungs, your heart, and your intestinal tract. So if you've got a headache, take Tylenol, don't take Advil or Motrin. Stay away from the non-steroidal drugs. And if you're on steroids, don't just stop. Please don't stop. But if you're on, a non, on steroids for a non-life-threatening reason, wean yourself down. Wean yourself down. The time to maybe have some benefit from a steroid is between severe infection and overwhelming respiratory infection. That's when doctors sometimes will use a dose of steroid to suppress the overreaction of your immune system. But isn't it better to have a healthy immune system that can interact with the COVID virus in a death way before you needed to suppress the overreaction of your immune system? So that's the first thing. Immunosuppressive drugs of any sort, stay the hell away from them. And if you possibly can, that includes some of the um, medications that suppress acid production in the stomach. So many people out there have acid reflux, heartburn. Now, if you've, got, if you've had bleeding ulcers, stay on your medication. But the acid in the intestinal tract, the acid in the stomach, kills COVID virus. Acid kills COVID virus. It emulsifies the fat. So if you can, come off those medications and rather use a barrier medication, 
something like Maloxol or Pepto-Bismol rather than the proton pump inhibitors, Zantax now off the market. But those drugs suppress acid and acid is one of the powerful protectors of intestinal COVID disease. So please do that. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about another way you can protect yourself. One of the key things that affect the severity of disease is the status of your immune system. If your immune system is already hypervigilant, if there's a lot of inflammation in your body, that inflamed place becomes a, uh, a, a, an area where COVID virus readily attaches. And because your immune system is all ramped up, COVID's going to attach to all your cells. To all the cells it gets exposed to. But if your immune system is ramped up, then your body will overreact to that uh, uh, virus. And it's actually the reaction of your immune system to the virus that causes a lot of the problems. So instead of having a fly swatter for a fly, you've now got a shotgun to try to kill the fly. And that shotgun not only tries to kill the virus, but it also does a lot of collateral damage. And if that explosion is happening, if that nuclear explosion is happening in your lungs or in your heart, we've got all kinds of problems. You can't breathe, you can't maintain your blood pressure, or your circulation, and that is what's causing the death of most people that are dying of COVID disease. So if your immune system is hyper ramped up because it's already responding to a lot of inflammation, that can be problematic. In the previous chapter, we talked about immune suppression, where the immune system can't react to COVID and COVID goes through this unchecked. Here, we're talking about the opposite, which is a ramped up immune system. And the single most prevalent, commonest source of a ramped up immune system, particularly in one of the worst places that the virus affects you, is in your blood vessels. In my PhD, uh, working with sugar, we clearly demonstrated within two to three hours of eating a large carbohydrate load, of injecting a large carbohydrate load into different organs and in, uh, uh, eating that high uh, carbohydrate load, particularly if you are already insulin sensitive or diabetic, what happens is that high sugar load affects every cell, every endothelial cell, every cell that lines every blood vessel of your body. Those cells swell up, They've got a high volume of sugar in them. Your blood pressure tends to go up, but the inflammatory cascade is triggered at spots between those cells. And when you've already got that vasculitis, that vascular inflammation at a fairly low level, normally your body doesn't, you're not aware of it. Your body's fighting that battle, but the immune system is ramped up. You are pro-inflammatory when you eat a high carbohydrate load because of the negative effect it has on your endothelial cells. And that vasculitis, one of the first places that COVID loves to go into so that it can spread all over your body, is into your blood vascular system. And the way we recognize that, how do you know you've got it in your blood vessels? If you've got a fever. The fever is a, a part of knowledge that the virus is spreading in your blood system and it goes to every cell that has access to the vascular system. So what happens is that virus is spreading through the, through the body, going to the organs. But one of the largest organs in your body is your blood vascular system and your lymphatic system. And if that's already got a lot of inflammation in it, caused primarily by sugar, you're in all kinds of trouble. And that is why the prevalence of insulin resistance and diabetes in people that are dying of COVID disease or ending up in the ICU is so, so ridiculously high. So ridiculously high. And, and one of the things everybody's saying, oh, well, obesity is related to COVID. If you're obese, you've got a high... Obesity does not cause the higher risk. It's sugar and starch that causes the higher risk because of the inflammation, but chronic excessive sugar and starch consumption also causes obesity. And whether you're obese or diabetic, type 1 or type 2, it isn't... The disease itself. It isn't type 1 diabetes. It is an out of control consumption of carbohydrates and the sugar in your blood vessels that damages those vessels that makes you at much higher risk for an overwhelming inflammatory response to the virus 
That's why people that are insulin resistant and diabetic are much more likely to get severely sick and die. Please people, every single day, every single day without the consumption of sugar and starch of any kind, and I don't care if it's ice cream or apples, sugar of any kind going into your bloodstream, it's the sugar in your bloodstream that's the problem. So go keto, go carnivore, and in the next chapter we'll talk a little bit about how to do that. Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the carb addiction doc, but today we're talking about keto COVID. In the previous segment, we talked about inflammation and how sugar causes vasculitis, causes vascular inflammation of every cell in your body. So the logical response is if you can get rid of carbohydrates from your diet and not eat sugar and starch, pretty much everything else that you choose to eat is for the most part going to be okay. We'll get to that in a second. However, getting rid of the sugar and starch that you eat and drink is critical in reducing your risk of getting uh, uh, um, severe infection. It's not going to reduce your risk of infection, but the severity of your body's response depends on how inflamed your body is. And it's amazing that the inflammation can go away in a few days, in a few days, coming off carbohydrates. We see fatty liver getting better in two or three days. I biopsy a lot of livers as a surgeon, and we prove that every three days, two to three days of carbohydrates, we can get rid of fatty liver. Your blood vessels are continuously healing. And as long as you can protect those blood vessels by not ramping up your blood sugar, it's ideal. And the best thing to do is to not consume carbohydrates, even if you're diabetic. You can lower your blood sugar, but you've got to be very vigilant of not having lows. Look to my other videos on diabetes to understand that. However, whether you're a type 1 or a type 2, it is the carbohydrate consumption that is the problem that causes the risk. Obesity is not the risk. It's what you did to become fat, which is chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption. So getting rid of carbohydrates is key. However, the, the single best way to do that the more carnivorous you are comfortable being, the healthier you're going to be. Because not only does the carnivore diet give you a relative abstinence or absence from carbohydrates, they also are loaded with fat, and it is ketosis that is one of the other protective mechanisms of cells as far as we know, where your body is using fat rather than sugar as a fuel source. Now, it takes a while for your body to fat adapt, but if you can start today and protect yourself from getting the virus for a long period of time, ideally forever, but what every, every day that goes by is an added protective day where your immune system is settling down, the inflammation is settling down, and you are better equipped. You've got all your soldiers, your immune soldiers, ready to go at this virus rather than ramping up inflammation that distracts the immune system and gives COVID an easy, easy inf uh, influx into the important parts of your body. So keto carnivore, the more carnivorous you can be, the more you can get rid of sugar and starch from your diet, irrespective of whether you're diabetic or not, the lower your risk is every single day. Not the risk of getting the virus, but the risk of getting really sick or dying from it. So please, please, please understand that the data is powerful out there. The number of people that are insulin resistant, pre-diabetic, or have diabetes, and this, that fall into that high category are enormous. Please tr reduce your risk. Go keto, go carnivore now. Even if you don't do it forever, please do it now to lower that risk.